No, nah, no, nah, I don't. Uh, I don't wear a watch. I'm not a watch guy. You know me. For the most part, I choose to. Um, I find a lot of material trappings to be frivolous. I'm not a watch hater. If you got a watch that you like, more power to you. Maybe you work on a submarine or uh, you're a, a captain of a cruise ship or something like that. I understand you might not have good data connection. You need something like uh, a little bit more, yeah, something you can wind up. But for me personally, I, I don't like a watch, but I wanted to tell you something. I have a watch in my desk drawer. I bought it in 2012, and I was just about to tell you it was still uh, ticking, but I took it out and it is not. <laughs> what do you? Is it out of batteries? You have to wind it. What do you? What do you do with this? It's a Timex. I don't know if that helps. Probably needs a new battery, if I had to guess. Why don't you? Um, why don't they just make one kind of battery? You know what I mean? Okay, let, let's not be ridiculous. Obviously, you're not gonna run your like Ford Bronco EV on like 15,000 AA batteries in series with one another. So you probably need at least two kinds of batteries. You need a car battery and then you can choose one other battery. I'm gonna say, I mean, for me, AA is the default battery. If you prefer AAA, that's fine. Growing up, the AA was always that, I would consider that the default. Too big for a watch? No, man, you just, uh, you put it like, you put the battery into like a, a power supply into your pocket and then it wirelessly transmits the electricity to the battery. No wires, I said wirelessly. Chad's nine volt pilled? Isn't that the nine volt is the one that you guys were all licking in school, right? Yep. I never did that. I was, I don't know. I was always a little more risk averse as a child. I never um, licked a battery. I never stuck like a, uh, a fork in a light switch or anything like, or uh, in, a, in an electrical outlet, I should say. By the way, can I tell you? So Sips is busy today. He's doing um, plate up, which is great. But I had said in the Discord with Malf and Sips, no worries. Also, to be honest, I think Remnant 2 was kind of DOA, unfortunately. It's got to be one of the only things I've ever played where nobody asked for it ever again as soon as, soon as it was over. All, people will still come in here and be like, when are you playing The Good Life? You ever consider doing like a replay of Fallout New Vegas and stuff like that? Remnant 2, as soon as it was over, we all collectively forgot that it existed. Malf then said... He linked me to the Metacritic score for Remnant 2, which I think I did to convince them to play it. I was like, see, it's good. And then I replied, I'm owned. And he sent me, a, he replied with an edited picture of Justin Bieber. I don't really know how to describe it. It's Justin Bieber, but edited so that he has no shirt on and his chest is like really, really small. And his shoulders are really, really huge. <laughs> Not edited? Oh, it's edited. <laughs> My child is sick today. We may get some interruptions. I knew, listen, it had been like five months since our last uh, family illness or something like that. I picked her up from daycare on Thursday. First thing she said is, uh, Daddy, I have a fever. Feel my forehead. I felt her forehead. She felt fine. And then the daycare was like, oh, don't worry about that. There was another kid here today with a fever, but we sent them home. I was like, uh, okay, well, <laughs> it's nice to know that my child is not sick on Thursday, but uh, as of yesterday, she started to come down with it a little bit. But now you're going to get sick. Whatever, man. I just tank it. The worst part about being sick is feeling bad. The second worst part about being sick is even when you feel half decent, everybody just comes in the... T like, I don't know. I, I must be... I'm trying to think of what this says about my personality. I hate when people show me sympathy. Like, I get a hero, thank you. Not the word I would use, but I can't stop you. But I hate when I just have like a, a sore throat, but it's like a 5% like a sore throat. 
and then like a thousand people come into chat and they're like, don't be afraid to take a day off. You can't say that because even when I'm not taking days off, all people, all people say in the discord is, is he going to be here today or is this the eighth Canada day of the year? Wait, what do you say fuck me for? I didn't even do, I didn't even do anything. I knew something was up because no Peloton this morning. That was like, I, I chose to do myself a favor. Um, I woke up at 3.30 a.m. to my daughter coughing and crying. I gave her a dose of children's Advil and rubbed her back until she fell asleep. And then my stomach was like, and I took like a 22 minute poop. And then I got back into bed. I wiped and all that. Don't worry about that. Um, and I looked at my alarm and it said like, your alarm is set for one hour and 41 minutes from now. And I said, no, thanks. <laughs> I said, you know what? Listen, I could get up and do 90 minutes of biking because I have done it in the situation before. But I also said to myself, maybe today, like why put extra stress on the body? Why make yourself probably feel it's counterproductive, you know, but tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow, you, and Kip Casper, don't even start with me. I saw you, everybody is, is, I should never have told people that I'm starting to bring the heat again. Cause now everybody's bringing the heat. If I hadn't told you that I was bringing the heat, I don't know if I would have seen you put out a 427 kilojoule 30 minute low impact ride, you know, low impact. They say that the, uh, you should have a maximum of 50 resistance and a maximum of 100 cadence at all times. Your, your PB or your, your low impact ride was higher than my 30 minute PB, which is crazy. I got a long way to go. But even Corey's starting to, he's catching up now. Everybody's going hard. It was good. Like, I mean, honestly, I remember what it was like last year when I had no jobs, no hope, and no cash. But what do you mean, even Corey? Well, like, I'm used to a situation where, like, I knew three people in real life who had a Peloton. And, like, for, like, six months, none of them were, like, riding it. It was just me pedaling out in, on Arrakis. Now, like, everybody's using it, except Apollo. And, like, I want Apollo to start riding the bike again, but I don't want to, like, tease him because it just feels like a mean thing to do. It would be like, hey, you know, ride your bike. You should add a Hafu. Well, I, here's the thing. You know what? Let me check my app. I sent Hafu my username. She added me. <laughs> Ooh, Hafu, I see you. I'm not going to put your... Stats out here. I see you out here, though. Why would you add her? She's a pro gamer. Uh, the more competitive people that I have on Peloton, the better. Because it pushes you. That's why, like, I did a great job for, like, a year of pedaling every day, right? But it was only when Kip Casper, you know, beat the piss out of me that I said, I realized that for, like, nine months, I've been, like... I would not say half assing it. I would say like, you know, 98% assing it. And now I'm going, now I'm going 110 again. Please look at Elon's newest tweet. It mentions Canada. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Ah, it is. Um, <laughs> Elon Musk wearing a shirt that says, I love Canada, but because he's got a, a blazer on over top, it covers up some of the letters. So it looks like it says, I love anal. And then he replied to himself and said, you can't say it's not true, though. This motherfucker might be the funniest guy on the planet. That's one of the greatest jokes I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> Did you see that the um, X motto? I don't know if Twitter had a tagline before. That's like a, a sine to a nerdle question. Um, they changed their tagline to blaze your glory. It's so funny, man. What does it even, what does it mean? Blaze your glory. That's not the feeling that I get when I load up Twitter is, oh, I'm going to just log on to X real quick and blaze my glory. Glory's a new stream of Indica. Uh, did I say stream? Slash marker. Dulls. They call them the dulls, but they're anything but. But here's the thing. If you do the dulls too much, 
they do get kind of dulls. But if you do them like twice a week, they're anything but, brother. I'm... I'm blue. Am I a blue man? <laughs> or is this what I normally look like? You look a little purple? Okay, okay, just give me a second here. You know how it is. Holy cow, that's so red. <laughs> you know what this preset is called? This is called soft white. That seems too red. Give me a second here. Wait a minute, it's a little yellow, don't get me wrong. You look like you're in Narcos. It's awful, I, I F with it. I always find, this lighting makes me think that I'm in like 2007 or something. Here, I'll try one more. Let's try one more. See, that's auto. But then when I sit down, it's a real problem. This one's called Daylight. This might be what I look like. Is this normal? Better? Keep it? You finally got it? Daylight is the one. It's me! I'm back! I'm not like a salmon or like a, an alien or something. Crude, $60 billion, a billion dollars in cars, lots of petroleum gas, insulated wire, tobacco, palm oil, $56 billion. I'm going to start off with something crazy. I'm going to say this is Turkey. It's not Turkey. It is on the Arabian Peninsula instead. Why, why am I getting so many question marks, man? I thought it was pretty good. $60 billion, 2,000 kilometers southeast. Southeast. <laughs> 2,000 kilometers southeast. Um, it's like probably not UAE. I think that's too small. Of, a, of an export for UAE. I think in that case, it's like Qatar. Is Qatar on the, it's southeast of Qatar. I thought Qatar was like as southeast as it goes. No, wait, wait, wait. There's Oman. Oman is southeast of, <laughs> he got there, well done. Oh God, oh man, oh God, oh man, oh God. In three, I know it's pretty, like Turkey's a good guess because the arrow that you get from Turkey, I mean, does anybody else think that Turkey is kind of like the, what's the platform called in Harry Potter? Pla platform seven and three quarters. <laughs> does anyone else think that Turkey is kind of the Earth's platform nine and three quarters? Thank you, thank you. Because you can get like anywhere from there. You can get to Africa, you can get to the Middle East, you can get to Europe, you can get to Central Asia. That's crazy. It's like, uh, it's kind of like the back rooms of the earth. Like, keep in mind, I live in Canada. I like it here, but I can't get, to, like, I can only get to one country. I go south, boom, you're in America. I go north, boom, you looking for this? You're in America. <laughs> I go west, it's the damn ocean. You know what the first uh, country I find when I go to the west is? Ocean, 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 Hawaii. Boom, looking for this, it's America again. So true. What about Greenland? Not America. Denmark, I think. That, that makes sense. East, I don't know. You go east, uh, you're in the United Kingdom, also known as America. No disrespect. 
the America of the East. <laughs> I've often thought that England is the America of the East. That should be like the slogan for the, the country. We're going to try Panama then. Oh, 11. Oh, don't be in the Caribbean, you piece of crap. How many Caribbean countries are there? We get it out. It's uh, Dominica, Dominican Republic, Haiti, Haiti. How about Haiti? We haven't had Haiti in this, I think, for a while. That's even warmer. It's 120 kilometers from Haiti, which means it's, the not, it's not the Dominican Republic. Now, the big boy is Jamaica. Is that correct? Nope. That's not the big boy. What is, what is this big boy? Is that, are you Cuba? Maybe that's Cuba. The mystery country is Cuba. Are you for real? I'm not from America. Also, I don't live in the greater Toronto area. So like, I don't vacation in Cuba, okay? For me, like, this is how messed up Canada is, okay? Because of how messed up the earth is, it takes almost the same length of time to get to Cuba from where I live as it does to cross the entirety of the Pacific Ocean and get to Tokyo, Japan, even though this looks like it's a hundred times further. That's crazy. Now, given the choice, would you rather vacation in Tokyo, Japan, or would you rather fly to Cuba to get drunk on Mai Tais with other Canadian drywallers? <laughs> I'm just saying, okay? If I'm, if I'm going on vacation, I don't want to see any other Canadians, okay? So I'm not going to Cuba. It's got the exact same Canadian density as Vancouver. Go to Europe? Yeah, you'd love that, wouldn't you? Go, go to Europe so that I um, can't get, uh, like, water or something, right? <laughs> so, uh, what is it? Oh, go to Europe and pay 25 cents to use the bathroom or something. What's the anti-Europe discourse right now? Oh, no, we're all mad at the only, uh, the guy in H Mart who thinks he's the only white guy in H Mart. So he wrote that song that people were supposed to have fun with, but instead it inspired like thousands and thousands of horrible bad faith takes. So I'm trying to recap this weekend's drama on Twitter. White guy in H Mart filling up his cart. What is he looking for? This cultural appreciation or appropriation he doesn't know. Now he's back in the frozen food aisle, getting dumplings for the hundredth time. Everyone's staring cause he looks out of place, but it's the only time he's ever thought of his race. Flight from Vancouver to Havana is $400, to Tokyo $900. Okay, DL Guiga. Who is the flight um, with to get to Havana? Because if you tell me that it's Sunwing, you lose VIP status. <laughs> it's Air Canada? Okay, you're safe. We have to get him off Twitter? Why? It's weird. They, honestly, my Twitter experience is great. Twitter used to make me mad because it was a bunch of like 11-year-olds tweeting me that were like, hey, where's today's Isaac episode? Please die. Now they've all left or they're like bothering other people. So all I see is other people's like, you know, viral tweets. I didn't think the dude's tweet about HMR. I thought he was just making a song and then a bunch of like 40 year olds chose to roast him for no reason. When I go to HMR all the time, am I the only white guy in HMR? No, I'm not the only white guy in HMR. There's like five of us, but I, I see what he's saying. He's overthinking it a little bit. What's an HMR? It's a Korean supermarket. Did you see the one with the BMX guys trashing a golf course yet? I didn't. Wait, yes, I did. <laughs> they were just tearing up the green, right? H Mart is more than just Korean. You know what I mean. It's the H Mart Defender has logged on. I've been, I, I've been going once a week to H Mart for 12 years. Sorry, sometimes they also have like some Japanese foods in the frozen food section as well. What does the H stand for? It's weird because there's H Mart. I think it's Hana Mart. But then in Vancouver, there's another grocery store right across the street that's called Hanam. So it almost seems like there's like Hanam and Hanamart. 
but they're not related. As far as I know, they're actually like bitter rivals, forced uh, star-crossed lovers, one Capulet and one Montague, forced to do battle in the realm of capitalism forever. So true. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet as a spicy pre-marinated L.A. Galbi, I believe is what Shakespeare said. What do you think Shakespeare's favorite flavor of Miss Vicky's chips would be? I'm going to say plain because he was uh, British. Dude, I was at the park with my daughter this weekend and there were like three, you know, here's what I realized, you know, and if you're like in this age group or maybe you were these kids, I apologize, but it's just the way I see it as like a, a parent of a two-year-old, right? Kids up to like the age of nine, 10, 11, very amicable, very affable, palling around, just having fun together. Kids between the ages of like tw 12, and up for a little bit, and then the upper bound, it depends on like what the, their friend group and their personality and stuff like that. A little scary, because I, I got to see like the progression, the male life cycle, right? There were a bunch of like toddler boys at the playground, running around, having fun, playing tag, tripping, scraping their knee, getting up and laughing about it. And then there were three 10-year-old boys that were like sitting on a big rock, and they were just having a great conversation with each other. They just said, uh, you know, I, I heard one of them say, ah, so I'm not the only one hopelessly addicted to Roblox. And I was like, that's, I love that for you. But then there were three 12 or 13 year old boys that were like sitting on like a piece of playground equipment. And you could see that like in only two or three years, like they've gone from like, my mom and dad are my favorite people on earth to like, I need to figure out what my own identity is. They were listening to drill rap on the playground and just like swearing. And I'm like, you don't even realize that the fact that you're doing this on the playground means that you're still kids. Like you're saying the F word while you're sitting on the jungle gym. Like you don't even, you're not a real, you're so far away from being a real adult that it's like comical. But they were, you hear them say stuff like, you know, it's because I'm not a kid, because I'm not an effing kid. And I'm like, man. Thankfully, um, they're boys, and we have a girl, and as we all know, teenage girls are no problem, so I'm not too worried about it. They pretty much just stay angels, like, all the way through to <laughs> old age, right? Around 50, sometimes they get a little, can I speak to your manager? Do you know how much money I come in here all the time, et cetera, et cetera, but... And then after that, it's bacon cookies and passing on wisdom. I'm so back. What are we at? 55 minutes into the stream? First joke. We got there. It's going to be a good week. Joker. <laughs> oh my God. Joker. I see Room. That's Brie Larson. I see Social Network. Jesse Eisenberg. David Fincher. Ridley Scott. Bohemian Rhapsody, what is a, in movies that take place in England, Roma, these are mm, one word uh, movies, what is a one word movie, Parasite, winners of best Oscar, I don't even know where to get started, to be honest with you, um, I feel like all of the, the, by the way, average is three out of five, this is crazy, ah, wait, 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 I've got something here, King Richard, didn't Bohemian Rhapsody lead to Rami Malek winning Best Actor? Maybe Joker is like Best Original Screen. Wait, Power of the Dog won Best Picture too, right? Oh no, Jane Campion. Macros, look away. Movies that would win screenplay. No. Did Brie Larson win Best Actress for Room? Bohemian Rhapsody won Best Actor. For sure. King Richard, best actor. Joaquin Phoenix did not win best actor. Who else would win best actor? Maybe Russell Crowe in Gladiator, but I'm pretty sure Gladiator won best picture, but that might be the connection. Oh, okay, okay, okay. 
were cooking a little bit. I feel like if one, this could be, they were all nominated for Best Picture, but they did not all win Best Picture. Best Picture this year was Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. This could be a screenplay, three billboards. Oh. <laughs> screenplay Joker. Screenplay Black Klansman. There we go. What, best adapted screenplay, okay. Nine swaps remain. There's no way Billy Bob Thornton's winning best actor, okay? For, not for Monsters Ball. It's not, they wouldn't give it to Joaquin Phoenix for that. It's got to be Shakespeare in Love, brother. Oh, no! Monsters Ball! Oh, God! <laughs> I'm cooked! Joker? Joaquin Phoenix won best Joker? Best Oscar for Joker? Really? Now, best picture is going to be Gladiator, Social Network, Shakespeare in Love, and Parasite. <gasps> and Moonlight. Oh, I got two swaps left, brother. <laughs> I don't even, I don't think mathematically we can get there. Best actress is right here. We can get there. And then Power of the Dog, Roma, Parasite, Life of Pi. Well, I mean, we, we literally just solved it, but I don't know what... Th this is Best Actress. This is Best Original Screenplay. Best Director. Best Director. Okay. I was going to say it's like Best uh, Foreign Film. Korea. India. Mexico. New Zealand. It's literally impossible to not win with two swaps left. Dio Guiga, you got a lot of, you're, you're a little hypercorrective lately. Right, so you know what, you know what threw me for a loop? You got VIP'd because you helped out a lot in the password game, okay? Don't get me wrong. But then you started talking about the Vancouver seawall and you were talking smack. And I was like, oh, you must be from Vancouver. Then you said, I'm from Brazil. And I was like, why are you talking smack about the Vancouver seawall? And you know how you replied? You said, I can link you to a video essay about how it's underutilized. Bitch, I live here. <laughs> I'm living inside of the video essay right now. I, somebody help me out. Help me. Get me out of here. It's not literally impossible to not win with two swaps. You could just do a fruitless swap. You could go like this. Badong, badong. Two swaps, we lose. As long as we're being pedantic. Today, free polio shots at home. Your health department. Listen, there's a lot of directions you could go with this one. Nowadays... You want to see your doctor? We're currently doing intake for new patients in winter 2024 and not January 2024. I'm talking November, December 2024. In the 1940s, 1950s, they break down your damn door and be like, here's some medicine. Come out, we got you surrounded. It doesn't make any sense, okay? This is 1952. It's 1961. Sigourney Weaver in the middle? What the hell? <laughs> it does. Why, why does it say shots in quotation marks? You're right. Get your polio shots here now. That was before we knew the power of quotation marks. It's, it's pre Seinfeld. Terrible shooting form? What are you talking about? His shooting form, it looks crazy considering we don't even know where the basket is. Thing could be like uh, 500 feet away. He's ball. It looks like a good jump shot to me. And I know ball. Many people on Twitter are saying that I know ball. Like I'm telling you, I'm calling it right now. Librarian, make sure you clip this, okay? Because this could go viral. Nobody's touching the suns this year. I'm being sincere. I know people hate like, oh, the stars are building their own teams. Like there's no loyalty anymore. Whatever. I just call it like I see it, okay? Now that they have a dedicated five in the form of Bowl Bowl, he's really going to open things up for Devin Booker to play his game. Don't even get me started on KD. KD's KD. You know what he's going to do? Devin Booker is going to have so much space on the court because of Bowl Bowl. I think he could really put down an MVP season personally. He's washed? He's not washed. He just needed a change of scenery. This is Latvia. I could tell you that much for... Well, you, you can't see why I know that. 
here, let me see if I can put it here. It's because it says like Latvia here. Demonstrators protesting for legislation to protect against communism. I'm not being a hater one way or the other. There's four dudes. I guess I don't want to say like it's not a valid protest unless you get like 20 people, but there's literally four old guys. What the hell is this? I don't know what to say. I don't know where this is. I don't know where he's going. I don't know what he's doing. It does look a little bit like Bloodborne. Is it possible that this could be Yarnum circa... I don't know what year Bloodborne takes place in. I, it just, it, it looks like England. But he's driving, no, 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 because he's driving on the right side of the road. But that license plate is not American. Did England start driving on the wrong side of the road? What do you mean there's no right side, wrong side? Whoever drove the first car got to choose which way that the car should be driven on the road. So where was the first car driven? Because somebody made a mistake. Somebody said, oh, no, 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 I would never drive on the right. I'm going to drive on the left instead. Germany made the first car? That doesn't sound right to me. I'm going to say it was America. All right, London, circa 19... 28. Oh, a pantomime camel needs the hood down to fit in a taxi. Is this like a fortune cookie? I don't understand. The, a pantomime camel needs the hood down to fit in a taxi. So true. Measure twice, cut once. A broken watch is right twice a day. This is Saint Etienne Le Bourbon. I'm going to guess this is the Tour de France. At first, I thought it was. Um, like an auto race. And I guess it still could be, but like this dude is a cyclist. I'm sorry to tell you, or I'm happy to tell you. And this guy, I don't know how well you can see his hat. This guy is a cyclist. You get to like with a hundred percent guarantee. But this is not French. This is like Belgium or, which means this might be auto race. But this, you tell me it took 51 minutes for it's the sit, it, it top means stage, right? This is the 16th, 16th stage, Saint Etienne Le Bourboul. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe this is Le Mans, the Le Mans of biking. I don't know where Saint Etienne is. I'm going to put us right here. I'm going to say this is 1992. Big screen confirms Roche's win during the Saint Etienne to La Bourbeau stretch of the 1992 Tour de France. Well, the year was great. It turns out, though, that the Tour de France takes place in France. So they should really get a new video provider because Jongelin Video Rusendal, that is not a French company. There's no, no doubt about it. Me, when I accidentally, I, I go to take a photo, then I realize I've got front-facing camera on by accident. <laughs> I just don't know what's happening. I'm like, is there a glitch in the photo? Or is it like a tight bun? There's a person standing by, oh, there's a person standing behind her. Oh, that makes way more sense. I was so confused. But then, wait, if there's a person standing behind her, why does she have the Frankenstein haircut? That doesn't make sense either. I mean, she could, I guess. It just seems like that doesn't make sense. I don't know. I don't know. Bro, it's literally like the throw-in. You know what I was thinking would be really overpowered in basketball? Can you just shoot on the throw-in? Like on the inbound ball? Because I'm pretty sure you could become like indefendable, undefendable. No, you can't. They should change that so you could, because that would be fun to watch. It would be insanely overpowered. It's illegal. Your homie has to alley-oop it. <laughs> okay, anyway, I didn't even think about this. We're in Boston, and it must be post-1963. Massachusetts is one of those states for such an important state. It do be like a little small, which is weird. Like what, it's somewhere, Massachusetts, there it is, right there. 
Ryan, I don't know what you want me to, I, I'm sorry. This should be Canada. So just act like you've been there before, okay? So true, so true. I'm, thank you, there's too many damn states. Americans when they don't know where Spain is. What am I supposed to do, memorize every country? Americans when someone doesn't know uh, whether Jacksonville, Florida is uh, in the south or the north of the state. You don't know where Jacksonville is? Oh, brother. 1972. How do we do though? Ooh, 43,493. Cole Cord, Oklahoma. It's a $220,000 house. This is a $240,000 house. It's a $260,000 house. It's a $300,000 house. I've lost confidence in my game plan. It's a $350,000 house. 55 acres? You could have put that in the... You could have given me that information earlier. It's like 20 miles, I think. I don't know. 55 acres, 55 hectares. This is, you're not buying the house, you're buying like a, a town. It's a national park. I don't know, $600,000? No, oh, less than, oh, it's less than that, idiot. It was 599000 when they listed it. <laughs> you dummy. Okay, let's say they sold it for five fifty. Sold for five fifteen. Too bad. Try again tomorrow. What is this? Is this a dog house? It seems weird to have a dog house that has like a door. Or is this like a storage shed? In which case, like, is this house like a hundred feet tall and this is a normal size? Like, what's going on with this? Is it chicken coop? It's the in-law suite. So true. Me showing my, my mother-in-law where she can sleep at our house. <laughs> you can sleep in the... You can sleep in the uninsulated doghouse outside. The door is three quarters of an inch tall. Sorry, we use the metric system. The door is 1.6 centimeters tall. Hey, did anybody watch Dan play the kart racer Battle Royale? Yes. Was it good or was it bad? It was like Fall Guys meets Mario Kart, pretty fun. It was better than Sap. I doubt it. People would always be like, don't play Sap, Sap's old, Sap's old, don't play Sap, play something new like Prey, the Arcane Studios game from 2017. And then other people be like, you should get addicted to gambling. <laughs> Forget video games, you should play gambling games. You know what pisses me off? I want to be mad that so many people do Counter-Strike uh, case opening streams because gambling is a, it's a surefire path to financial ruin. But the thing that pisses me off is that I feel like Counter-Strike global offensive items as an asset class have appreciated more than almost any other asset on the planet in the last 12 years. So all these motherfuckers <laughs> opened 10,000 cases, spent $100,000 opening it, and then their reward for their stupidity was reselling it for like 10 times more than they paid for it. Shit pisses me off. <laughs> Drives me crazy. I'm up 300% on everything I've ever bought in CSGO. That's crazy, man. Did you see, by the way... Gambling is so dangerous, even the casinos lost. Did you see? There was, uh, it was hockey news, so you probably didn't see it. But a Las Vegas casino lost $6 million uh, due to the results of the Stanley Cup Finals. How do you lose money running the casino? Well, it's kind of complicated, NLC. Sometimes if the bookies have pegged the odds of something happening at X, but it seems like the players have pegged it at Y, the bookies will split the difference in order to get the added benefit of outsized uh, bets from... What? Fucking, who cares? Sorry, I shouldn't swear. My, my child is upstairs. <laughs> but... Freaking, who cares? Swearing's fine around kids. 
hot take. Um, if it's your kid, I agree. I'll always like, uh, sometimes I'll see like a post on Reddit that's like, fellow dads of Reddit, do you have any recommendations for music that is good for children? How about just music that tastes good? Tastes good? What's wrong with my brain today? Music that sounds good. It's not like kids have to listen to, you know, we're going on a bear hunt. Gang, gang. You can listen to anything. You know, I'm, I'm not even messing with you. My child now, um, at bedtime, she always wants me to sing um, Swimming Song. Do you know what Swimming Song is? Holiday by Weezer. Let's go away for a while, you and I, to a strange and distant land where they speak no word of truth and we don't understand anyway. Now, she's heard it from me so many times, she will sing the words herself. That's how I, I sang her Under the Sea before bed for 18 months straight. Now she's finally, uh, she's singing some music that I can get down with. Unfortunately, she learned how to sing from me, so that's no good. <laughs> Slash marker. Now I will never introduce her to new music, or new Weezer, I should say. This is like the 10th time I forgot the name of this game. I'm so sorry. I don't think I have any glycogen today. Hi, Tomo. Stampede Royale Racing. Stampede Royale Racing. Stampede Royale Racing. It's Monday, everybody. They made a new Battle Royale. I didn't know how good I had it in 2019. Every single day, there was a new Battle Royale that came out. Hey, there's a new Battle Royale for shooting. There's a new Battle Royale for scooting. There's a new Battle Royale for looting. Then people thought that Battle Royales killed the industry, so they stopped making them. They stopped making them. We entered a very dark period. Now we've realized what actually killed the industry is over-designed AAA nightmares that have systems on systems on systems, but every single one of the systems is like just yet another hook point for you to put your credit card number into it. Anyway, I haven't played this yet, but as I understand it, it is a kart racing Battle Royale that is presently in its playtest. Hang on, I'm gonna emote. <laughs> is me emoting? It's me emoting with hearts. This is me emoting with tears. And this is me emoting with an angel. So far, so good. We have one of 60. <laughs> Come on. Come on, don't be scared. U.S. West, that's where the party's at. U.S. West. Chant it with me. U.S. West. U.S. West. One of 60. Oh, welcome, guest. I'm going to be an angelic driver. You got nothing to worry about. You wave at me. Tee hee hee. I think I'm in love. Jessica Simpson voice. I think that I'm in love with you. I got the something, something, something. Okay, these are all bots. Now this is for all the marbles. I think. It said come top 20 to survive, but like there's only 20 people left in the lobby, so this got to be our finale, right? So does this game have online support? We're, we're online as we speak. We just happened to get a lobby that had a lot of bots in it because the game uh, it actually takes your real-world driving record into account. And because I'm a flawless and perfect driver, it said, well, we don't know where to match you yet. Like, we don't, we don't have anybody else that's in uh, pro tier. What do they call it in League of Legends? When you're the best to ever do it? Teemo mode? They didn't have anybody else that could go Teemo mode with me yet. So they needed... We're, we're just doing our placement matches right now is what I'm trying to say. All I, get, I don't really care if I win, but I have to be the first place human being. So, someone's coming at me with a freaking bullet, man. I've already accepted I can't beat the AI. That's why they have, you know, chat GPT, not Ryan GPT. I'm in fifth place? What, what the hell happened? I'm getting hit by the Zambonis. Send them. Sorry, kid. I never had a choice. Turbo speed, fifth place. This is my chance. 
A lot of people don't know this. In the average card racer, it's actually better to be in fifth than it is in first. Because you can get blue shells. Get bumped. Ooh, my item. My turbo, my turbo, my turbo! Sixth place. We lost to the guest by four milliseconds? You finished sixth of 20. Final round, sixth. I mean, six, we made it to the final circle. That's pretty good. <laughs> I don't need to view the tutorial. Launch me again. Okay, give me, a, give me a game with some people this time. You've had time to download the game now. It's four, four gigabytes and 46 megabytes. You ever think about how crazy it is that probably the best Mario Kart players in the world don't even have a driver's license? I do have a driver's license. Whether or not I should, you know, remains to be seen. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I would recommend uh, placing a mine and then driving into it, but you know what? Someone, did anyone see fun if someone finished the lap seven seconds ahead of everyone else? Thank you for the raid, uh, by the way, Daniel. Thank you. <clears throat> Most pro Valorant players aren't real snipers either. Um, that's true, because people who were snipers in the Marine Corps, uh, I believe that they all play Honkai Star Rail. Battle mode. True, true, true. Plus two, plus two. True because I did. True, true, true. Dan, I don't know if you're here. Did you did you win a game of this? Sticky bomb. Oh. Winner crown. Two seconds until round end. Well, I made it out at least. He did not. <laughs> I don't, I don't think that's Kate. Not because she won, she's good at games. I just think someone sniped their username because they know that this is the new hot social media platform, so usernames are gonna be worth a lot of money. Holy cow, they tanked the mine? They keep tanking the mine for me? I really appreciate that. Oh baby, here we go. Sticky mouth. I'm ready. I got a lot of practice with these. <laughs> oh no. Ellie bomb. Go, 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 go. Here. Top. You know what? Just beat the person pretending to be my wife. That's all I asked for. Oh! You, they used the shield! I don't think it's her. I think it's. I think it's an imposter among us. Because I didn't hear any cheering when that happened. Honestly, I think I'm going to slash marker the Stampede Racer Royale slash marker. Stampede Racing. The, the truth of the matter, it seems fun, but it's, it's the, the camera shake is giving me quite a lot of motion sickness, quite frankly. And I'm like, I, I could do one more round without throwing up, but that would probably ruin like the next two hours of my life. So do you think AC6 is gonna be robot souls? I don't know, man. It's, I will say the gaming industry is cooked though. We need a win. I think that the only way gaming survives to 2026 is if uh, Armored Core 6 is the greatest game ever made. It's the only way. And then people say, said, you know what, because uh, you, you're probably spitballing about uh, Armored Core 6 on your uh, stream, Dan. People will say like, uh, oh, Armored Core is not really like Souls. Didn't the last one come out on like the Commodore 64? From Software has not made one in like 18 years because they've been too, bu too busy making like six of the best games ever made in a row, plus Dark Souls 2. That's like saying, you know, if Nintendo took like 30 years off from making Mario's and you're like, oh, I hope the new ones, you know, like Pokemon. And you're like, Mario's not like that. Well, it's not 1987 anymore, brother. They might, they might have learned some lessons over the past two decades. I'm not anti-Armored Core. I'm very excited. It's the last hope for the gaming industry. Dan doesn't like Sekiro. Every person is entitled to one um, wrong belief, one demonstrably incorrect belief without it uh, impacting their credibility. Unfortunately, Dan has two. He doesn't like Sekiro, and he thinks that Prometheus is a 9 out of 10.
What about Hades? Okay, and also he does... Everybody's entitled to five insane beliefs without criticism, okay? What are yours? I could beat any fifth grader in America at basketball. That's a big one. A lot of people didn't seem to agree with that one. Food poisoning is not real. That bit was taken out of context and continues to be willfully taken out of context by bad actors. But I will say, me personally, you know what I thought would be a very funny uh, tweet? Is, um, you know the, the meme from the, the discourse around Oppenheimer? Or the, not even the discourse, but the meme from Oppenheimer. Where the first picture is like a highly oversaturated Isaac Clark, like browbeating Oppenheimer. And then the second one is uh, Cillian, uh, Killian Murphy looking like this, like, like he's, he's hung over and sweating and like panicking. It would be like left. That's my chat. Did you or did you not say that food, pays, food poisoning is not real in 2013? And then Oppenheimer is me having diarrhea 12 times a day, summer 2022. It's not Isaac Clark, it's Jason Clark. Isaac Clark's the guy from Dead Space, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> did you hear about Paul Rubens? Fuck, I did not. This is the kind of... Th th being a streamer, listen. It's like the worst thing that can happen during your stream is when someone says, did you hear about blank? Because you know that like, no one, it's never like, he had a great day today. He got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. It's always like you're live finding out that people whose work you respected are dead. We got to start mixing in like some red herrings. Like we should be like, oh, did you hear about um, Taylor Swift? No, what happened? God, no. Oh, her tour is uh, single-handedly saving the American economy. Oh, good for her. Librarian, be real with me. I'm, I'm cooked here, aren't I? I know you, just to get ready for videos this week, you must have um, played a bunch of this weekly. How does my team look on turn eight? With, with two wins, two losses, and uh, no scaling units except the cassowary. Wait a minute. We got something. Ladies and gentlemen, take the level just for space. You know you're not getting the next uh, step up. That's fine. Buy strawberries. We didn't get strawberries. Brother, you don't. You know what? You can be here because you could at least give us a food. You might. You know what? Why not like do one damage? Maybe there'll be like some melon armors. You could. Eh, it's, it's a tier one food. What do you expect? Lobster? Early cassowary scaling is pretty good, but I think trumpets are great tempo. It's a damn, like, the, the Super Auto Pets respecter is logged on. Who would have thought, man? I'm liking SAP a lot lately, but snipers are kind of boring me. Feel like it's too easy to just fill your team with snipers. I think I'm going to plus two you on that one. Sniping's kind of annoying. That's why last week was, like, the greatest weekly of all time. The only sniping I support is in Team Fortress 2. It's been 12 years, okay, since it... Actually, no, it's been like 16 years since it came out, right? Just let it go. I'm sorry. I, I, I hate to be the one to say it, but like... Your friends, your family, they're, they're worried about you. We thought Team Fortress 2 was just a phase. We thought maybe you'd move on to something else later. We thought maybe you'd move on to Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2. Thought maybe you'd move on to... Tom Clancy's The Division 2. Thought maybe you'd become one of those people who became insufferable about Braid, like me. But you're still out here just going, you know, just role-playing in, in all chat. Push the cart! It's player count peak this summer. Yeah, you know what, what else is player count peaked this summer? Frickin' Earths. So, like, it's not that impressive. Anyway, if, if you're not hitting a peak player count this summer... You should be embarrassed because you're declining relative to the speed of population growth. I'm not hating on TF2. I'm hating on the people that play it. You got me all twisted up here. I'm much more of a doer. Tomo, get out of the freaking court! Look at this guy. He's cute as a button. He's purring. Is that something cats do when they're happy or distressed? I don't want to get 
canceled for animal abuse? Both? <laughs> Buddy. Hi. He loves the attention. And you know what? I love giving it to him. You know, the thong song is always the song I think of when I see people my age say something like, um, the music these days is so sexual. I don't really think that she should be out here saying, oh, like my badonk be thonking, Dro dropping my badonk on your pole, thomp thomp. You know what I'm saying? They always think about that. I was like nine years, out, nine years old. Ooh, that dress looks scandalous. Uh, something, something, something. Can't handle this because she got dumps like a truck, truck, truck. Guys like what, what, what? Baby, shake your butt. I think I'll sing it again. We had like a very vulgar music in our era too. You're, I'm horny, let's do it, riding my pony. I'm sitting in the, in the passenger seat of uh, my mom's Ford Ranger just going, burr, 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 burr. I'm just a bachelor. This is me at nine years old. I'm just a bachelor looking for a partner. Exploring your body, every single corner. Baby, when I break you off, you know you won't want to get off. You're horny. Let's <laughs> Sorry. But it's true, man. Or something. I don't know. I didn't really think about it. I think we're going to get 10, though. You ever think about that? The Beatles were horny as hell when they wrote, I want to hold your hand. You know that Ringo originally wanted to call the song... I wanna, <laughs> I'm sorry, no matter where it goes, it's too, it's too far. I was gonna say that Ringo originally wanted the song to be called, I Wanna Tongue Your Blank, to put it in the match game parlance. Front or back? Front. Dude, the tier one foods go crazy. Librarian, you don't know what you're talking about. We're going to the moon. Look at that, dude. We all got a, a three, a level three, ten win shoe bill run. Sentences that have never been said before. Are you vaxxed? Unrelated question. <laughs> I believe. I believe in God. I am vaxxed, okay? I'm not afraid to say controversial statements like that on my stream. Now, how many times... It's kind of a personal question. It's fucked up that you would ask. Three? I think? I lost count at some point. And then, like, at some point, I think they were like, you could get number four. And I kind of, like, I read between the lines of the text from the government. It was like, if you want, I guess, we have, hey, we're holding, like, a dose here for you. If you're interested, you could come in. And I was like, I see what you're saying there. You stopped reporting on the numbers like three months ago, and then you said, stop getting tested. <laughs> so I see what you're saying. Have you got your shingles vaccine? I haven't, but I'd love to, I'd love them to juice me up, man. I don't want to get any of those fucked up illnesses that you can get as an adult that sneak up on you. I don't want shingles. I don't want... What are the other ones you can get vaccinated for as an adult? I don't want HPV. I don't want uh, any, anything with pox in it. Yeah, I don't want any kind of pox, that's for sure. I was 18 when I broke out in shingles. Don't take this the wrong way. I mean, there's no wrong way to take it. But isn't it like if you're like 17 years old and 364 days, it's chicken pox? But if you're 18 years old and zero days... It's shingles? Like, is that how it works? Not at all. All right, never mind. <laughs> What's your favorite Ice Spice song? Great question. Um, me personally, it's close, but I'd have to say uh, In Her Mood. That, that would probably be number one for me. 
How do you know who Ice Spice is? Because I'm 34, not like 134. My apologies. <laughs> hey, that, wait, wait, whoa, whoa, why when you said it, it made it, it hurt even more. <laughs> I'll freeze to it. You, like, you're not doing anything, so get killed. Capitalism be like, I don't know, I wasn't proud of that joke. Oh, baby, I'm proud of this, though. The Canadian healthcare industry be like, you're not, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Maybe I should be lucky that I can't seem to get a doctor's appointment in Canada. Because it seems like I, every news story that I see about the Canadian medical industry over the past six months is like I went to the doctor for a cough and they signed a form that said I could legally have like painless assisted death if I wanted. And I'm like, that's nice, you know, if you're in the position where that's relevant, but I'm just trying to get like some damn Tamiflu or something. 3.3% of all deaths in Canada last year were made. That can't possibly be true. That seems too high. I feel like 3.3% of Canadian deaths, if you told me it was snowmobile accidents, I would believe you. Because they're do like, I don't live in a place with like a real winter anymore. But like, when I lived in Ontario, like every winter there'd be a story that's like, you wouldn't believe it. Jeb got on the skidoo and he said, I'm not waiting for the... Wolf Island Ferry, I'm just going to take the Polaris across Lake Ontario, and wouldn't you know it. Librarian, we're getting nonstop 10 pieces. I might be the best Super Auto Pets player on the planet, quite frankly. Can I tell you, I had a very proud um, mo moment this weekend. We're potty training my daughter still, but she's finally, like the past few months we've been trying to potty train her, she hasn't been receptive to it. And it's really hard to like force a two-year-old to do anything. I mean, I can force them to move through physical space by like picking them up, but that's about it. Like I can't force them to squeeze out a turd on the potty. But we ran this weekend, no, no diapers, no pants. So it's been a little messy, but at the same time, I was so proud yesterday. We were watching Toy Story 2 for the third time this weekend. She looked at me and said, Daddy, I need to go to the potty. I said, let's go! I picked her up, like Batman in the 1969 movie carrying the uh, bomb where the fuse is about to go off, carried her to the potty. She let loose an entire bladder into the toilet. And she was so proud of herself. I was like, oh my God, that's amazing! And Kate was like, that's incredible! You're incredible! And she was getting all like bashful and stuff. I feel like we're finally, we're making progress which is very important because I don't know if there's other parents watching this, probably, wouldn't surprise me. People do be having kids. Two and a half years old is kind of like a, an awkward age for like extracurricular activities. There's lots of activities for babies. You know, you go to the library, they'll like read them a story or something like that for half an hour, just something to get you out of the house, right? And if your kid is like three, then they can start taking classes at the community center, you know, day camps and stuff like that. But if your kid is like two and a half, you need to get them potty trained because otherwise they can't do anything. <laughs> just great, I've, I've been having a great time spending a lot of time with my daughter, don't get me wrong, but I don't have any skills. I can't teach her ballet. I can't teach her, you know, basic conversational Chinese or anything like that. She's got to start going to the potty so that the community center would actually like be like, okay, you can come to the classes now. And then her life can really start getting enriched. Just kidding, his perspective. He's like 10 feet behind me. <laughs> oh, man, you should have seen your face. <laughs> ah, Jesse Pinkman. Oh, man. I don't, why does it take me so long to play Super Auto Pets these days, man? Hey, Anel, did you see that one of the island boys is gay? I didn't see that, but I'm going to say good for them. That's where I'm going to fall on this issue. I don't know if you expected anything else, but <laughs> if you were wondering what my thoughts are on that, I'm for it. 
I think they should live their best life. Oh, I've got a, oh, what? What the hell are they cooking, bro? Wait a minute, we still won. But how did they get four uh, death touch? Weren't they like really racist or something? Oh, so racist people aren't allowed to live according to their true selves anymore? Is that what you're trying to say? Didn't they murder a dude? I think you're asking a variety of questions here, okay? Did they murder a dude? No. One of them was arrested, I think, for murder. But I don't know if they murdered anyone or they were just accused of murdering someone. How do you know all this? It was big news, bro. In, it, it was, these were revelations that shook the island boy community to its core. What class and race are you going to play in Baldur's Gate 3? Race is easy. I'm going to be uh, Caucasian. And I think for class, I'm going to spec into father. I'm going to be a Caucasian father. <laughs> oh, get drawn. Meta pick minus two. <laughs> Who do you, what do you mean by this? Speak on that for a second. What do you mean? What do you mean by that? Level the tiger, please. Level the tiger. I said, do you speak of my language? She just smiled and gave me a Vegemite sandwich. Do you guys ever think, I was listening to a lot of the police this weekend. Do you ever think that it's possible that the police are um, the thinking man's men at work? Uh, we're cooked on this one. There's no chance the bear's gonna eat us alive. Don't get me wrong. I'm, if, if men at work has one enjoyer, it's me. But I feel like men at work over their whole career made one great police album. And the police over their whole career made like four great police albums. And the singers found very similar. I cannot overstate how little I think about the police or men at work. You never hear like synchronicity too in, uh, in public? something said something said something got us you know what I'm saying police drummer goes hard I think the police are pretty good I think you know what maybe it's gonna be the fall of the police and I named it thusly so that you can talk about it online without people canceling you that's the song you think of when you think about the police I feel like the police don't get enough credit. I, I don't like their their singles like all that much necessarily. Like, um, you know, message in a bottle, little uh, overplayed, a little shallow and pedantic. I don't know what happened, but you crushed me here. Nine wins, I'll take it. <laughs> this has to be on purpose? What, what has to be on purpose when I said that I, I'm talking about the band, the police. This isn't a normal Twitch stream. Here we talk about stuff that we understand, like music and stuff like that. We don't talk about complex socioeconomic issues, except for me being triple vaxxed. Only triple? Listen, buddy. <laughs> what would you have put on the Voyager Golden Record? Man, that's a great question. What would I have put on the Voyager Golden Record? Wait, can I get a year check first? What year did they send it up? It was like the 70s, right? Do it for 2023. Hmm, 2023. What would I put on the Voyager Golden Record? First thing I would put, my Bitcoin wallet address. Just in case the aliens are hodling. Directly under that, recipe for McDonald's sausage and egg McMuffin. Because I think that if the aliens have not discovered the pinnacle of breakfast yet, this will at least get us to the point where they're like, holy cow, thanks for the sandwich recipe, right? They'll be less likely to annihilate us with like a photon cannon or something like that. I would say probably under that, we'll put Steely Dan's landmark album Asia 
and then season two of Dexter on DVD. The one with, that's the one where Dokes starts to discover his uh, secret identity. I believe it's also the one with Lila. It was when Dexter was at its peak, in my opinion. I got to go with season four. Re season, season four, John Lithgow? Season four, John Lithgow? Come on. I mean, it could get worse, but we got to put a McDonald's Sprite in there. You see the tweet this weekend that was like, McDonald's is not serious. And then it was a sign on the McDonald's that said like, no milkshakes, no fraps, no uh, McFlurries, no Sprite, no, no cola, no fries. <laughs> Why are we giving aliens McDonald's? Or I'd like to think that if they haven't already discovered it themselves, they would be thankful for that valuable knowledge. Or do you disagree? I don't trust people who say McDonald's tastes bad. Caveat. If they say McDonald's tastes bad and they eat no fast food, then I take them at face value even if I don't necessarily agree. But when someone says McDonald's tastes bad and then I'm like, well, what did you eat for lunch today? And they're like, oh, I went to Burger King. I'm like, you've lost all credibility with me personally. It tastes bad and it smells worse. Well, it, actually, McDonald's smells amazing. Um, it because it smells like chicken McNuggets, which are scientifically derived one of the greatest tasting foods of all time. I uh, my my insane belief, my toxic trait. I believe that if McDonald's was not a chain restaurant and instead it had like one location in. Uh, Marseille in France, it would have two Michelin stars. Yeah, I don't think it could get to three because the McFlurry machine is broken way too much. You have to imagine like the critic would come in one time and be like, can I have a score McFlurry? And they'd be like, oh, the machine's broken. And they'd be like, minus one star. Please, this is your fifth insane take you're not supposed to have anymore. I think it's that good. You are not describing McDonald's then? I don't know what you want me to tell you. It tastes good. It's not good for you, allegedly. <laughs> but I think there's some, I have a little bit of debate on that subject, but we don't need to get into it. Just go to a burger restaurant. I, I don't even, the hamburgers at McDonald's, maybe that's my problem, because I like to eat foods that are good and hamburgers are the most overrated food on the planet. But the, the chicken at McDonald's goes crazy, man. And I think that anybody who disagrees is putting on airs. I'm losing. How, how can both of these things be true simultaneously? Chad is maintaining that uh, McDonald's is not good. The hamburgers suck. But also, you didn't get the hamburger? What are you doing? What are you doing? Those two things cannot be true simultaneously. The chicken nuggets are just ground up bones. Brother, wait till you find out what soup's made of. Oh, oh you eat bread? Really? The most processed food on the planet. Did you, you, you know, you starts out as a little seed and then it shows up as a big fluffy sandwich. Yeah, yeah, okay. You play, okay, the, the recipe for making bread. Put a seed in the ground, water it, wait six weeks, a freaking sprout comes out, grab the sprout, take it to a factory, grind it up into dust, reformulate it, add water, like, a, like it's instant noodles or something like that, turn it into a dough, mold the dough it's into some shape that doesn't exist naturally occurring on earth, bake it in the oven and slice it up. You're going to tell me a chicken, a chicken nugget is just the bread of the chicken world, man. You have to add yeast? There's yeast naturally occurring in the air, you hoser. I think. I just can't believe you're saying McDonald's should be Michelin starred because of the chicken. I can't believe that you're denying your own brain. Like, if it didn't taste good, it wouldn't be the most popular restaurant on the planet. It's like they made it addicting or something. Yeah, they made it addicting because it tastes so good that you want to eat more of it. The worst, the, the problem that I have with McDonald's is like, Vancouver's got some issues. So like, sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm kind of feeling McDonald's for dinner tonight. And then I go to go through the drive-thru and the drive-thru is just like, there's traffic cones that are blocking you from entering the drive-thru. And I'm like, oh, here we go. And then I like, 
park my car and I get out and I go into the restaurant and there's like, you know, just like detritus all over the floor or, you know, all the machines are shattered or something like that. And the only person in the store is a security guard. And he's like, oh, we're not open right now. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's like a one in five chance that when you go to the McDonald's, the McDonald's has been like um, shut down by either the police or the, the city. I went into a fast food bathroom and saw pubes in the sink. It is pretty disgusting, for sure. I was gonna say, how did you know that they're pubes? It couldn't it just be someone with curly hair? I mean, as much as I like the idea, like the story becomes a lot better, don't get me wrong. The story is better if they're pubes. But also, like, I just can't imagine somebody... If you told me that you saw, like, that it looked like somebody shaved their balls into the toilet, I would be like, that makes perfect sense. I could totally see that. But the idea that someone would go to McDonald's and shave their pubes in the sink is just like, I don't want to live in a world where that seems like something that could happen. So, and maybe that's on me. Maybe I have too much faith in humanity, but... What if the, the Cure got approached to do uh, the new Subway jingle? With Friday, I'm in love. Monday, Tuesday, cold cut combo. Thursday, Friday, sizzling steak. It's Friday. I think I did Friday twice, but anyway. It's Friday, tuna loaf. Saturday, steak. Sunday's also another steak. Monday, Tuesday. Can you, a little help? A little help, please? It's got to be something that kind of rhymes with steak. Steak again. Imagine sleeping through this, this bit right here. Shake and bake. They don't sell shake and bake as Subway. By the way, I, I know we keep talking. I've never been uh, tweeted something more than I was tweeted about the Subway Corporation offering someone free sandwiches for life to change their first name to Subway. And I think as soon as a restaurant has to offer that, they're cooked. I've been talking about the downfall of Subway for a long time as one of the last Subway defenders up until fairly recently. I know it's kind of embarrassing, but it's true. Um, if you have to offer people free sandwiches for life to change their name, your restaurant is done. There's no coming back from that, I'm sorry. Didn't you sue Subway? No, you got, me, you got me twisted, okay? I didn't sue Subway. Subway sued the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, which is a, a public company funded by the taxpayer. Why did they sue them? Because they did a laboratory analysis showing that the Subway oven-roasted chicken was like 57% soy protein and like 21% chicken DNA, which is insanity. By the way, I literally didn't care. Much like the insane take that McDonald's would be Michelin starred if it was just run by like one uh, old French guy in the countryside. The chicken, I, even if calling it chicken is a misnomer, I personally didn't mind. Because I thought it tasted pretty good for Subway. Not like in an absolute sense. Let's not be It didn't taste as good as like, you know, a, a blueberry or something like that. But I did, I, I had to be principled and I said, you know, I'm not going back to Subway because they're trying to bully the Canadian public into, uh, you know, I, I don't know, into silence, basically. Is Tomo getting old? Well, like as any of us are, yeah. But like, I'm trying to think, he's nine or 10, he's a cat. Okay, it's not, I, didn't, I wasn't there when he was born. Ruka is like six months older or something like that, so he's definitely 10. We, um, both Kate and I had like a melancholy moment because Ruka went up the stairs after dinner one night and he was like, oh, 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 oh. He wasn't meowing the whole time, but he was going like super slow. And we we're like, oh no, he's getting old. This is so sad. And then like two hours later, he took a dump. And I swear to you, that dude zipped up 
18 stairs in less than one second. It was like his feet didn't even touch the ground. He was just like, zoom! And I, I realized that he gaslit us. It wasn't that he was like old. It's just that he was like, I don't want to expend the energy to like move as fast as I can. I swear, he's just like a pill. Instead of making me better, he's making me ill. Oh, we're gonna lose. <laughs> Thank you, Pink. Thank you, Pink. Very cool. Pink, a star-studded cast today, folks. Chibli, Chibli's here. What was the other one? I forgot. We, we had one more, one more name that worked well with my busted Donald Trump impression. Olivia, that's right. Olivia, Olivia Munn, everybody. Olivia Munn. Chibli, the wonderful Chibli, the wickedly talented Olivia Munn. And thank you to Pink, Pink, with her song, Get This Party Started, which we will, because we've got Chibli. Chibli gets the party started, and of course. <laughs> Don't forget about Ripley. Ripley, believe it or not, Ripley's here too, with Olivia Munn. With Olivia Munn. And Ripley. Ripley. <laughs> it's fallen apart. Turns to Richard Nixon over time. Richard Nixon is more like... It's like, a, a, like a, a hound dog, but not in the Elvis sense. You gotta speak from the jowls. Be like a lazy monk. Here, give me lasagna. If lasagna wasn't the name of a food, it would be like a great name for a person. Mom, dad, this is my girlfriend, lasagna. La look at that, lasagna lover just gifted you five subscriptions. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> Hey, uh, you know what would be a really funny name for someone? Obvious Clone. Can you imagine if you were like, Mom, Dad, this is my girlfriend, Obvious Clone? Streamer finds infinite money glitch. Dude, we should do a fake TikTok NPC stream. But then here's what we do, okay? So I'm starting at the end of the bit and we're going to take it down a level of abstraction every time. The bit is... We quote tweet ourselves, but from like a pseudonymous Twitter account with a blue check so that it gets amplified in the pay to win algorithm. It's a quote tweet that says, forget TikTok NPCs. This is the new future of TikTok. And it's literally just a TikTok of me. And as soon as someone's name pops up in chat, I say their username and say, give me money. So I'll be like, Iruvatar, give me money. And then bring like a chili pepper pops up on the screen with their name. Hey, hey, Mellonade, give me money. Bring. Hey, Alaskan Ninja One, give me money. Bring. And then that tweet will be so incendiary, it'll go viral like crazy. People, I can't believe the kids these days. But what they don't know is that the TikTok is actually just me having scripted it and made it up. No one's actually giving me money, it's just CGI. And then I'm also the person who quote tweeted it in the first place to make it go viral. You guys ever read Watchmen? There's this cool guy in it named Ozymandias. Anyway, hey, librarian, thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Please just play the game. <laughs> play the game. Anytime someone sees Tomo on screen, whenever Tomo's not on screen, they should be saying, where's Tomo? Hey, hey yeah, don't go to the courts. What happens? Why is the streamer so worried about Tomo getting the cords? And what is this silo that they're in on Apple TV? By the way, I, I got a, a little bit of hate. I, I posted a comment on Zeet. Um, and the comment was, here's my new... I, I propose a modifier for all movie scores, okay? It's very simple. The modifier for all movie scores is this. Day one streaming on Netflix, every movie gets a plus one out of 10. The normal condition is theaters. If it's on theaters, it's a zero. Minus one out of 10, Amazon Prime. I forget, basically, the more inconvenient it is to watch, the more, um, the more points it gets down. And the inspiration for this tweet was that I saw some people say, hey, Twisted Metal is not that bad. Here's the thing, brother. In order, if, if you came out with a Twisted Metal show in 2013 and it was a seven out of 10, I would download an app to watch it. 
Unfortunately, you came out with a 7 out of 10 Twisted Metal show in 2023. I already have 25 different streaming apps that I like juggle month to month. My ass, even if it's a 10, it comes out as a 7 because you're making me get Paramount+. Plus. It's not going to happen, okay? It's not going to happen. On Netflix, because I've got inertia, a 4 out of 10 on Netflix becomes a 5 just because of the ease of accessibility. Now, luckily, most of the movies that come out on Netflix are twos. So they get bumped up to a three, and then I don't have to watch them anyway because it's trash. But I like Dan said, I'm on a Zoom call right now. Just reading this chat is crazy. I almost got serious on Twitter this weekend because there was a tweet that I saw that was like pseudo viral. And it, here's, the tweet was a picture of Zoom's offices. And it says, why does Zoom have offices? And so many people were like, so true, so true. I'm not... A Zoom guy. I don't really care for the most part. Do you ever consider that, like, maybe to provide a service, even if the service is remote working, you might need to all be there in person for like infrastructure based? Listen, just laugh at the joke. It's like the most boomer joke of all time. It's like, why do we park on a driveway and drive on a parkway? Then you should like it. Listen, <laughs> this wasn't like an invitation for me to get cooked, okay? You need this first. And then, okay, take both. We're cooking something a little different this time. And why do we cook bacon, but bake cookies? I never thought about that one, but that's, uh, that's something to think about for sure. You can bake bacon. Yeah, but you can't cook a cookie. You, I guess you could. You just call it a pancake, right? Is anyone, well, there's something, Mal should be here, man. He's always trying to come up with crazy food items. What if you sauteed a cookie? Like, I get the idea that you would lose out on the economy of scale. What if you cooked... I bet a cookie would hit like crazy if it was fried in a frying pan. It's like... I always think about... Like, Oreos taste pretty good, but the Oreos must taste good as fuck at the Oreo factory. Can you imagine, like, a hot Oreo coming out of the oven? <laughs> I don't know how they make them. I bet, a, I bet a freshly baked Oreo is fucking like, oh, I can't even imagine. It's like, the, I know, I mean, I, I can't say I know, I guess, but I have a hunch that we will never, most people in this chat, at least, will never get to taste the best food ever made, myself included. I'm just rolling, brother. Give me something. Nothing! My hunch for what the best food of all time is, is I bet like a, a Dorito straight out of the industrial fryer at the factory in Louisiana is probably like the best food on the, on the planet. I can't even imagine. So a tortilla chip? Yeah, but a, a Dorito. Because my theory, and it's just a game theory, my theory is that Junk food, the people who made junk food recipes are offended that they're called junk food. Because they're like, what the heck? This is actually the tastiest thing I've ever eaten. The reason that they think it's so tasty is because they've only had the freshest possible version of it. Like if you invented Doritos and you've only ever had Doritos straight off of the assembly line, I bet you're like, why does everybody act as if Doritos are not like insanely tasty? It's the tastiest food on the planet. But there's something when they bag it up and then they ship it across the country, you know, they don't taste as good when you finally open it up at like a two-year-old's birthday party. But right off the conveyor belt, I bet that the Dorito hits like crazy. Your Toy Story 4 take was spot on. Thank you. I, I mean, I'm not ashamed to admit it. My kid was watching Toy Story 4, or sorry, Toy Story 2, and they were getting closer to the scene where, like, you get Jesse's motivations. Not Jesse Pinkman, but Jesse, um, the yodeling cowgirl. And I was like, I'm not gonna cry this time. And then, like, five seconds into the montage about her being abandoned by, like, the only person she's ever loved I would like tears coming down my it was literally I was in like a completely neutral emotional state and then the scene came on and I like borderline instantly started weeping and then as soon as it was over I was like back to normal it was crazy
whoever wrote that scene tapped into something like very foundational to the human ex experience. It's crazy. Did your daughter comfort you? Well, I hugged her. I was like, come here and give daddy a hug. She was emotionally unaffected by the scene at all. But she's like two and a half, right? She doesn't really know um, what's happening in Toy Story. She just likes the characters. And she knows some of the lyrics or some of the quotes. Like she says, save it for the jury. And I said, what's that? And then she's like, that's what Mr. Potato Head says. Does it hit harder knowing your kid's going to have toys like that? Actually, and I, I, I don't say this to like dunk on you because I think there was more of a question here. There was a good faith question. Not at all because like I am old enough to understand that Toy Story is a movie. So like the toys being abandoned in Toy Story is extremely sad because they have the emotions of human beings. But in real life, they're just plastic and wood and stuff like that. So it's still sad in real life. No, you got to get off of that. We got to we got bigger problems in the world. Little Stuart fricked me up as a kid. I was crying. Sorry, I'm dying at you calling it Little Stuart instead of Stuart Little. It's such an innocuous mistake, but just something, it's just like so, I'm trying to figure out how to describe it, but the fact that it's like, it sounds so wrong to my brain is so funny. Like calling that little mouse, Little Stewart is so funny. Little Stewart is the Asylum Films version. Wasn't there some, there's like remarkable facts about Stuart Little, right? Like, wasn't there one where it was like a very famous painting that was lost 100 years ago in the sinking of the, of the Titanic appeared in a background scene in Stuart Little? There was like a, a $135 million painting that they just used as like a random prop. Did you know Stuart Little is not a mouse? What do you mean by this statement? Stuart Little is not a mouse. What the heck is It's the strongest team I've ever seen? He's never called a mouse in the book. He's a mouse. I don't know what else to say. To be honest with you. It's like when I go to Subway and I say, give me a foot long kick and chicken. I don't have to say sandwich at the end. Like that's the, the implication is that it's a sandwich because I'm at a restaurant called Subway Sandwiches. There's a conspiracy theory that Stuart Little was just retconned into becoming a mouse in the movie. Why would they do that's insanity? What are you talking like it was just a movie or is a book about a boy? And then they they just said, wouldn't it be funny if he was a mouse instead? Doesn't he drive like a tiny little motorcycle and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> he does have a really tiny car. <laughs> According to Wikipedia, it's about a mouse like human. That dude is a mouse. You may not want to believe it. You may not want to hear it. It is a mouse. Imagine being a dad and finding out your wife gave birth to a mouse. I mean, it would... You're, I'm, I think that I thought that you were going to say like, oh, it's a guarantee that like your wife did something untowards. But now that I... I mean, you didn't ever say that. I think if, if I went to the hospital with my wife and she gave birth to a mouse... I would be very sympathetic to her. I would be like, what's going on here? I wouldn't be like, yeah, she, she definitely effed a mouse. I would be like, do we need to go see like a shaman or something? I'm not like a, a, the kind of person who's like, you know, I'm, I'm not a, the, the shaman believer, I suppose I should say. I'm just saying, like, I mean, if it happened, you would be like, what's going on? Anyway, we didn't really finish talking about it. I think Toy Story uh, 2 is peak cinema. Toy Story 1 is also very good. You know what's crazy about Toy Story 1, watching it now as an adult? It's clearly made by like filmmakers. Toy Story 4 is made by like Disney to make money. And it's a good, it's still a good movie. But Toy Story 1 has like camera angles in it. It's not like telling, just telling a story front to back. Like it has. It has actual cinematography. Talented people worked on it. If anything, my, my hot 
Toy Story take is actually that the oh, I, I may I may be required here in just a moment. You know, I should pause it. I'll I'll leave you. I I can't pause it. It's a stream, but. Slash marker B for just a second. Slash marker delivery. Be back in just a moment. So I would say that my most um, controversial take about Toy Story is that Toy Story 3 is better than Toy Story 4, but simultaneously, Toy Story 3 is the most overrated Toy Story. Toy Story 4 is the worst Toy Story, but it's also the most underrated. People talk about Toy Story 4 as if it's like, like the movie has no redeeming value whatsoever. It's not true. It's still a good movie at the end of the day. Toy Story 3, people talk about it as if it's like Apocalypse Now. It's still good, but it's like, I think it's a little overrated. Everyone rates four highly. Uh, as someone who produced a viral Toy Story tweet this weekend, you are incorrect. <laughs> the average person who replied to me, uh, if they got a time machine, the first thing that they would do is go back in time and prevent Toy Story 4 from being made. It is always emasculating when like, people come to your house and they're like doing a real job that requires the use of your muscles and your brain. And then like, I'm down here in my little goon cave talking about <laughs> Toy Story 4. <laughs> when they always come down and they see like the big studio light and the, the setup that I got here. And I'm like 34 year old man with gray hair. Like me personally, I think Toy Story 4 is one of the more underrated children's movies ever made. And the Toy Story 2 might be the most emotional movie that's ever been made, me personally. So embarrassing, dude. That's true. Whenever they walk in, I should be like, yeah, uh, go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Hey, here's the thing, okay? I was talking to JT Miller's agent earlier today. He said he's very happy in Vancouver. He said he doesn't know where all the scuttlebutt comes from, that he's unhappy and he make, he's making a trade request. Listen, all of my contacts in the front office say that this core, sure, they've made mistakes in the past, but they're rebuilding the team with a winning culture from the ground up. The young guys are excited to be here. They got some old guys in there to mentor as well. They got some great locker room presences. Uh, and we're all looking forward to the next season. Okay, next caller. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Listen, listen, you piece of crap. Toy Story 4 is a perfectly serviceable film, okay? It might not fit in with the same kind of legacy as something as Toy Story 3, but for just a two hour long movie to watch that tells an interesting story, it's still very enjoyable. Never call again. I think we should sell and try to run a trumpet build. Yes. Oh, I should have saved the food, Andy. <laughs> Andy, Andy, when somebody loved me, everything looks beautiful. And then Jesse, she's, the kids grow up, everybody knows this, but then she puts Jesse under the bed and it's like years later, she's talking on her phone and Jesse's down there and she's like sad. But then the kid looks under and sees Jesse and pulls out Jesse and you're like, oh my God, she's gonna play with her. She's gonna take her on a car ride. But then at the car ride, Jesse's smiling like, she's so happy to finally get some attention from her favorite person in the world. And then the girl gets out of the car and throws her in a cardboard box and leaves it at the side of the road, man. Oh, John Lasseter, what are you doing to us? It's abandonment issues. It's, someone said like you're, you're putting your abandonment issues on display. I don't really have like abandonment issues. I think it's just a uniquely sad situation. Like you don't have to suffer from like a psychological compulsion just to, uh, you know, have sympathy for something. Just to be sentimental. Mauzo is very good this weekly. What is Mauzo? Is that like a little Stewart situation? Mosasaurus. Oh. 
Mosasaurus. Okay. I understand what you're saying. Mosasaurus. I get the picture. Did he say little Stuart? You weren't here, okay? You weren't here when we got the foundation of the joke. Someone earlier in chat said little Stuart, and it got me laughing. I saw Stuart Little in theaters, by the way, when I was a kid. That's, I guess, how old I am is what I'm trying to say. I'm an old man. You know, I've, I've told this story before, but it's... It's always funny for me when I think back um, to like the kid who was the biggest badass in like our sixth grade class was humbled one day because we got the pizza order and they ran out of pepperoni slices. So he had to eat a Supreme slice, which is like pepperoni with green pepper on it. And he started to cry. And even as a 12 year old, I was like, not such a hard ass now, are you, idiot? You're saying like, that's crazy that I'm making fun of a child, but I was a child at the time. I was even younger than he was anyway. Moving on, I, I have a similar story about Stuart Little. I saw Stuart Little um, in theaters with my neighbor. Well, like my neighbor's kid, who was my age. My neighbor's kid, um, even at like age 10, age 11, would get into fist fights at school. He, one time... Uh, in sixth grade, the teacher told him, like, go to the principal's office. And he basically just went, like, nah, that's not how I see that going down. Uh, so he just left the school. He just, like, I mean, I don't, I don't know how to describe it in any other terms. Like, he, rather than go to the principal's office, he just walked straight out of the school and walked, like, 15 kilometers home. Which was a real problem, because everybody was like, there's a 12-year-old kid missing. Anyway... So he was like a self-styled kind of hard ass, right? When I saw Stuart Little with him, because we were friends, virtue of proximity um, to one another. When I saw Stuart Little with him, dude was crying his eyes out. And it's an emotional movie, I get it, but like it's still really funny. But it just reminds you that like even, you know, like, if a kid's a badass, there's still like a little freaking kid, right? Be like a alert reactor, better than a reactor alert. Me when I'm Oppenheimer. What do you think I'm the Oppenheimer of? I developed a way to turn Isaac into like a, a never ending series. It's a good point. And then, much like Oppenheimer began to realize the error of his ways, I realized the error of my ways, because you can't put the atoms back into the bomb. You know what I mean? You can't unsplit the atom. Isaac Clark, did you or did you not say that you would play Isaac every single day until you died? Me as hungover Oppenheimer. You can unsplit the atom. The sun does it all the time. What do you want me to say? I'm not the sun, okay? The sun do be taking care of business and working overtime. Very true. Twitch streamer science? I'm never, I've never claimed to be a scientist. I've always self-aware claimed to have a degree in biology. And then I, anytime I bring up having a de degree in biology, it's right before deliberately saying the stupidest thing you've ever heard in your life, okay? I'm not like most other streamers. I'm aware of my stupidity. Do you know how hard it is to stay the world's humblest streamer on this website when like every single day people tell you insane stuff in chat? They'll be like, you're the smartest person I've ever heard of in my life. You're the most handsome person I've ever seen in my life. You changed my life. You got me through some tough times. You know how hard it is to maintain a, a, a healthy sense of self in a situation like that? I'm a damn legend, man. Okay, Donald Trump. <laughs> hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Ghibli. Olivia Munn, everybody. Olivia Munn. Thank you for your kind words, Olivia Munn. Coming next to the stage, is it, is it Ghibli or is it Ripley? Ripley. Ripley's coming. <laughs> you don't like that one? Every time you said Ghibli, it me Who's, Who am I doing an impression of? Trump? Yeah, she got it. It must be good. Lovely Momo, lovely Momo with the vacuum cleaner. We love the way lovely Momo vacuums, don't we, folks? Ghibli likes it, don't you, Ghibli? And Olivia Munn, Olivia Munn, you know she likes it. 
And Ripley, believe it or not, Ripley's still here. Ripley, believe it or not, Ripley's still here. You need to, people need to know whether or not their president is a Ripley. And I am not a Ripley. SNL level impression derogatory. <laughs> Lovely Momo, lovely Momo, Chibli, Chibli and lovely Momo, folks. They love to play games together, they do. And we love to watch them, yes, we do. Some people, anyway, don't they, folks? Bro, streaming is so fucking easy. It's so funny. <laughs> it's the easiest thing in the world. What am I even talking about? Ghibli, Olivia Munn, a flood of laughter emojis go by. Olivia Munn, Chibli, Olivia Munn from X-Men Apocalypse in theaters. So it's not the best X-Men, folks. It's not the best X-Men, but she did make a good Psylocke, I believe. I've been told many people are saying her on-screen portrayal of Psylocke is such a stupid job. <laughs> Are you going to play Let's School this week? I intend to. Can I tell you, though? I thought it was... <laughs> this is the truth. I thought it was like a... Um, just a straight-up school simulator where you, like, make a school and try to have it make money or get, like, high standardized test scores or whatever. Um, but then I saw part of the trailer. There were a bunch of girls in school uniforms doing, like, a synchronized dance out in the... Like, the football field. And I said, oh, is it one of... Is it what? Because sometimes many, <laughs> these games, folks, many, these games, you think that's a game and it's a game and then you play it and it's not so much a game. It's, it's more of like a, it's a, it's, it's a, an erotic thing. I have four hours in it. It's just a school sim. All right. That's great to hear. It's got a shot then. It can make it out of the lion's den. Talia, Talia Tate, everybody. They do, they, one of the game, Suggestors, folks. Sorry, I, I don't think I can. I think you're saved. I think your name doesn't work perfectly with it, which you should take as a, <laughs> it's a gift from God. Talia Chibli. So sometimes you got to start with the Chibli in order to get the next word to work. Chibli and Olivia Munn, people. Olivia Munn, put your hands together for Olivia Munn and Chibli and Talia. Suggestor of games. No, it doesn't work. It turns into Kelsey Grammer. Raz al Ghul's here. Ra Chibli and Raz al Ghul. Fresh from the Lazarus pits. Doesn't he look good, folks? Yeah, he looks terrific. Best bit in a while. It's so horrible, which is why this is amazing. <laughs> why is everyone laughing so hard? It's not, it's not funny, man. That's why it's funny? I don't understand the planet anymore. Hey, I want off. Is that like a Threadless t-shirt? I still can't believe there's people in my house here me do this. Chibli, Olivia Munn. Probably talking to my wife. They're like, it's so nice of you to take care of your brother like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're a hero. It's just the most insane unhinged sounds coming from the basement. Crocodile, crocodile, skunk, crocodile, snipe me, buy me, roll me. Chibli, Chibli, Olivia Munn, Olivia Munn. I'm at work right now. <laughs> oh. What am I doing, man? Why Olivia Munn? It's just one of the only other words that I can say with the impression. I don't know why even. It just works. Donald Trump after watching X-Men Apocalypse and <laughs> streams all day. We need a streamer president. Just wondering, do you have a radon detector? Uh, I'm not neurotypical, so it's actually kind of problematic that you assume that the stuff that comes out of my mouth is because of a lighter-than-air uh, gas leak in my house. The stuff that comes out of my mouth is because of the stuff that my brain is made of. The shapes aren't the same way that they are for you or something. I got a bigger amygdala and a smaller... Yeah. Okay, we need, we need freaking toys. We get, to, librarian, pay attention to this one. We're already at five wins with five life. We're going to the moon. Okay, we're probably gonna lose this round, but that, that's not like a harbinger of things to come. Are they even here? I don't know. Maybe. 
The stream has been bad, but it hasn't been that bad. Like, they should still be here, in my opinion. Probably left after the Trump bit. What are you suggesting? James Gunn. Olivia Munn. Chibli. Olivia Munn. And James Gunn. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. I miss Caesar salad. That's the thing, man. Life's so messed up. People hated the Caesar salad. There were posts on the subreddit. It was like, I'm going to stop watching this guy if he keeps doing this horrible Caesar salad bit. It's been eight months. Now, everybody's like, hey, do the Caesar salad bit. Do conservative Yoda. Six damage to the lowest health enemy twice. Bro, this is going to disrupt bear teams. This, I'm being sincere. You should pay attention. Pay attention to this one, librarian. This could be a big one. She's back, folks. Lovely Momo. Lovely Momo's back. She's back. And she brought the vacuum cleaner with her. We love the vacuum, don't we, folks? It makes things cleaner. It makes them... You can walk around with or without socks. It's, not, it's so bad. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, there's no way I'm going to stop doing it because it freaking kills, man. I'm not getting that toy. Oh, no. Someone's been upstairs the whole time. Has that been going crazy? I thought they were... I'm so embarrassed. I thought there was nobody here. I can't even imagine, man. What's the level three dove doing? Listen, I can't maintain the level of focus required for super auto pets right now. Something's fundamentally cracked in my brain. <laughs> Build the dove. <laughs> you'd, I bet you'd like that, wouldn't you? All right, there's six. That's pretty bad. Let's run it back. I'm too busy doing the bit. You're absolutely right. I'm too busy doing the bit. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to focus. Three minutes till he does the bit again. I'm not doing the bit anymore. The bit's over. The bit's done. I almost wanted to say it in the in the Trump voice. That's how quickly it came back. Because bit is such a good word for it. Because it, it, it lives right here. Bit. It works very well. But this, I don't really want a strawberry. I don't really want two kiwis. I need a toy, bro. I need a, if I'm gonna run this, I need a toy. I've, I've literally lost focus already. Don't just give me a draw. I'm not saying I deserve it. Just give me a draw. How do you solve captures? Well, okay, listen. If you're asking for me personally, it's pretty simple. I just click um, all the squares with a traffic light in them. But I like that we've now gotten on to new captures where literally is just a box that you click and say, I am not a robot. Because you know what? It's every entity on Earth should have the same experience that me at age 15 had going to websites where you had to click a button to say, I, am, I certify that I am over 18 years of age. <laughs> Don't tell them how to solve it. Did you see the post on Twitter where chat GPT made a typo? Like it was asked uh, something about history. And then it said, instead of ancient, it said ancien. And then the person said, what the heck is ancien? And then Chad GPT said like, chuckle, I'm sorry. Ancien is not a word. What I meant to say was ancient. And I was like, how can the, how can the AI make a typo? It just it doesn't make sense to me that the AI could make a typo. The info it got had a typo. So the AI is only necessarily as good as the worst information that's fed into it. It's dumb as hell. It can't do math either. <laughs> That's crazy. They should make it smarter before they release it and it takes over the world or something. Um,
Luckily for me, I don't have to worry about that because I've pivoted from being an expert in artificial intelligence. My newsletter had seven subscribers that received my email to their spam folder directly every day. I'm now an expert on uh, room temperature superconductors, which is a very lucrative field right now, folks. Was that three minutes? Have we waited three minutes? <laughs> Lead appetite isomer forms, ladies and gentlemen, in the, in the audience tonight. Lead appetite isometric forms. They levitate. It's not a good levitation, folks. It's not very good, but it, the science, they're a little dubious as well, apparently. The, the science is dubious, folks, but with Olivia Munn, <laughs> Olivia Munn says it's real. We trust her, don't we, Olivia? She's very good, not in the movies. On camera sometimes on Attack of the Show with Leo Laporte. Leo Laporte is here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the only superconductor who will never betray us is J.K. Simmons in Whiplash. So true, I think. Although he does kind of um, betray Miles Teller. Well... <sighs> That's what makes Whiplash such an interesting movie, I suppose. Does he betray Miles Teller? Or does he give Miles Teller the push that he needs in order to achieve greatness? Now, should a, a teacher care more about their student becoming a, a great musician? Or should they care more about um, the well-being and happiness of their student overall? See, I mean, that's the... I mean, I think they should care more about the well-being and happiness of their student overall, but... Whiplash was such a mid-movie. Whip, whip, Whiplash is incredible. You wouldn't get it. You know why? Because you're not my tempo. Whiplash is an unproblematic story about the best teacher of all time and the woke mind virus sufferers who try to take him down because they're jealous. It's an Anne Randian story about the value of individual excellence and how the better you get, the harder gravity becomes because the more people that are tugging at your ankles trying to drag you back into the melee. Hey, Anel, is your dad bald? Nope. Grandpa is, though. No doubt about that. He's definitely been bald longer than I've been alive. Maternal or paternal? They're both bald. I was pretty much cooked from the get-go. Never really had a chance to get going. And honestly, I'm part of the problem because I passed on my genes too. And I passed them on to a girl and girls carry the baldness. It's like the Bene Gesserit of having no fucking hair. <laughs> We've been cultivating, like, the baldest possible bloodline for centuries, somehow. Fine. What is it, 152, we made a good joke? Ah. The Bene Gesserit folks, we don't like them much, do we? But in many ways, we need them, I think, the Bene Gesserit. The Quaiser Hadarak is here as well. Everybody give it up to the Quaiser Hadarak. Timothy Chalamet. Timothy. Timothy's here, Chalamet. <laughs> Just say Chibli and move on. Yeah, but the more people hate it, like the funnier it gets by far. Don't we, folks? <laughs> Do Wonka in the voice? Nah, you can't just see. You can't just summon that impression on demand, you know? You gotta be a little bit more. Willy Wonka, folks, chocolatier, extraordinaire. He's a little weird, but we love him. We like him a lot. Don't understand him, but we get him. We like him. And the gobs... <laughs> Such a good first stream to watch. Did you take the, the test yet? No, I can't get an adult autism assessment until winter 2024. Which might as well be like, oh no, they're using my own abilities against me. <laughs> which, because I suffer from ADHD, might as well be 100 years from now. Why not just get on the list anyway? No, I think I'm going to drive to the United States of America and pay twice as much to get one done, like, that day. <laughs> Living the dream. Way more than 2x? I don't know, the quote that I got in Vancouver was it was going to be $3,300 for the test. Why bother? It'd be nice to know. It would explain a lot. <laughs> what are you going to tell them? I'm going to tell them the same thing I told you on Friday. 
the entire saga with, with Small Ant and the idiopathic toe walking, and then being like, nah, I don't think so. And then um, watching an episode of Love on the Spectrum, and the dude says, when were you born? And the lady says, 1997. And he said, ah, nice. The same year Men in Black came out. And I said, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> that sounds like me. Hang on. Librarian, you might want to pay attention to this one. Because we're back. I've come to terms with it. You should not be on the squad anymore. I've done nothing with you. Librarian, don't watch this one. We got no chance. You can take the Rads R online. What's the Rads R online? Isn't that an Offspring song? Mommy's online. Daddy's online. They just seem a little weird. Surrender. Surrender. Through an adult diagnosed ADHD. That's not the Offspring. Yes, but the Offspring song is called The Kids Aren't Alright. But then I had to... They don't really say alright in that song, so I had to find the Cheap Tricks song instead. Why are you doing the voice when you're singing? Excuse me! Cheap trick, everybody. The uh, Dexter Holland from The Offspring. Surrender, folks. It's a good song. It is a good song. Mommy's all right. I would say, yes, mommy's all right. We can, we've all got eyes. Daddy, we're not so sure. I'll take your word for it. This is a cell. This is a cell. And look at this. Now we're cooking. Librarian, you're going to want to pay attention to this one. Do I hear the staircase? Who's, who doth approach my office but lovely Momo? Welcome back. Folks, welcome lovely Momo back. <laughs> lovely Momo, Olivia Munn, Chibli. Chibli is here as well. Say hello. Ripley. Chib Chibli's here? Chib Chibli's not here yet, believe it or not. Ripley's here. Ripley's here. We're, we're, we're so back. We're so dead, but it's good timing. All right. Slash marker, sap, sorry. Okay, let me see if my wife is ready to stream. She's already streaming. I will send you over there. I'll get a good night's sleep tonight and come back with a good brain tomorrow. What are we going to do? I don't know. Maybe we'll play Let's School. See you then. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yes, as I walk through the valley where I harvest my grain, I take a look at my wife in real life. She's very plain. That's just perfect for an Amish like me. You know we shun fancy things like electricity. I don't remember all the... I, I don't remember the whole thing. I ain't ever punched a tourist even if he deserved it. An Amish with a tood, you know, that's unheard of. But I keep something and something so long that even Ezekiel thinks that my mind is gone. I'm a man with a plan, I'm into discipline. Got the Bible in my hand and a beard. Apparently I do remember the whole thing.